1997 classic, David Lynch, Lost Highway. I think this is one of Lynch's finest films in many respects, and I'm gonna give you a strong argument as to why. It, it's For most people, it's one of the more obscure films, maybe one they've seen, maybe a lot of people didn't quite fully understand it because it doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. It seems to go in a large circle, a loop at the end a little bit. And I'll be more clear about that in just a moment. But this film has a stellar cast. Patricia Arquette, Bill Pullman, Robert Blake, Balthazar Getty, Robert Loggia, Gary Busey, Richard Pryor, Marilyn Manson, Mary Sweeney, Henry Rollins, Jack Nance, Giovanni Rabisi, Mink Stoll, and Drew Barrymore. Barry, not Barry. It's a, it's a different Drew Barrymore. But anyway, it's a terrific film. And here's the thing. If you're watching this one at home on your big screen, let's say you got a 100-inch TV, which would probably be pretty cool. That movie, even with a fine sound system, is not going to compare to a big theater. This is a film that begs to be seen on a big screen. And why? I'll tell you why. David Lynch, an auteur, a fantastic director, also does a lot of the own, his sound, similar to John Carpenter. I just talked about him in Christine Review. John uh, David Lynch does the sound design and is involved in the sound mixing and certainly plays a key role in, you know, how this is going to sound on the big screen. And in the movie, there are so many moments, just as in Carpenter's film, where he uses silence. There's a lot of quiet moments. And then, boom, it's disturbed by a sound. Or the, the sound effects in the movie, the music that Lynch selects, he doesn't compose his own music, unlike Carpenter. However, he does have a mind and an ability, an uncanny ability to pick the perfect song for each scene that he uses in his film. So uh, the music, the songs in Lost Highway are fantastic. David Bowie, um, so many others, Nine Inch Nails. There are a lot of cool songs. Angelo Badalamenti always does also the music for David Lynch films. But this film is a little bit uh, like maybe like Christine in a sense that it's a, a non-ordinary reality, an alternate parallel world where the rules that normally would apply in our universe maybe are skewed a little bit. They're not playing out the same way we might expect. It could be looked at as possibly a dream, kind of a nightmarish scenario that a man is having. It's very perplexing when we see the lead character, Bill Pullman, suddenly change and transform into someone else, the Balthazar Getty character in the film. Um, then he, and later in the film, he flips back. The Robert Blake character is a, a real strange persona. We don't know if he's real, if he's some kind of ghostly apparition that's in a material form for a while, or what the heck he's all about, but he is a strange one. There's a certain element of fear and paranoia running throughout the film. The Robert Loggia character, he plays a very heavy-handed influence there on the Balthazar Getty character. And he just builds up a lot of tension throughout the movie. Patricia Arquette in a dual role. She, we see her with dark hair. We see her as a blonde. She's apparently two different characters in the film. But it's just, she, she has such a, a beautiful, exquisite presence facially. Her facial features were just, I think, ideal and perfect for this movie to create the character that she plays. Uh, it just overall is a movie that I had seen at the theater the first time, scratched my head, really didn't understand it, just thought it was weird, as David Lynch films can be. However, many years later, I watched it again, I believe, still a little perplexed by the film, Watched it again about a month ago, and I was a little depressed after I watched it. I thought the film was a bit of a downer. It seemed a little bit nihilistic to me, and so I did really, again, was at a loss to say that I really liked the film. Then I saw it a few nights ago at the big screen theater, and I'll tell you what, it's turned me around completely on this movie. And why? Because of the sound. The sound and the effects and the music as I perceived them in the theater a few nights ago, had such a much more profound impact on me as a viewer than it would have, you know, than it did when I watched it at home. The sound just was not able to be as rich and, and dynamic and loud when it needed to be loud and then quiet when it needed to be quiet. It, it just did not have the impact on me watching it at home. And, uh, 
the images also were very much more clear and vivid because there's a lot of very dark scenes in Lost Highway. You can really kind of, looking at it on a home screen, and I have a 70 inch screen and we sit close, so it looks pretty good. Again, it just could not compare to the restored version that was shown at the theater. And I overall got a lot more out of the film. I still feel like it's a bleak movie in terms of its overall tone and message. The emotions in the film, for the most part, were, were pretty muted for me, except for the fear. I jumped into the little bit of the anxiety fear thing a few times in the film. It just really is, is amazing how this movie can grab you and really kind of make you feel a little bit uneasy at times in a way that we kind of want to. That's why we go to movies. We want that experience of take us out of our normal life, what we're doing. We want to be projected into another world for a little while, to experience the fantasy of feeling something different. And I did in Lost Highway. I, I did care about the characters at different times as to what was going to happen to them, but in kind of a detached way. It wasn't something that really was close to my heart. I didn't have a lot of strong emotions or feelings about the characters, but it was almost like being an observer, a fly on the wall, if you will, and trying to add up this mystery as to what is going on here? and who is who, and why are they doing what they're doing, and what's going to happen next. And a lot like the way a dream can be at times. When we're in a dream, we don't know we're dreaming, but we're lost in the events of the dream, and each thing that happens in the dream seems really, really important at the time. And that's kind of how Lost Highway felt to me. There even is a Lost Highway hotel in the movie, but it doesn't really play a super key role. Um, the flashbacks in the movie that I thought were incredible, but I mean, I'd say flashback. What I really want to get at is the scene where they had a reverse fire and explosion in the house. Uh, that was something that they showed a couple times. The image is mesmerizing and uh, just much more powerful on a big screen. So uh, I think overall, I'm going to have to stick with my recommendation here on Lost Highway that you see the film, but if at all possible, see it at a big movie theater. If you watch it on your home video, I don't think your experience will probably be quite as strong or significant, but then again, I could be wrong. Let me know how you feel about it. If you like Lost Highway, you want to chat, leave a comment below and do all that stuff they tell you to do, subscribe and like, but you know, I don't really beg people to do that kind of thing. If you like my channel, I figure by now you subscribe to it. If you don't, that's cool too. Peace, happy trails.